Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing every single piece of stationery that I own. Yes, every single one. This may be the longest video I have ever filmed, but I'm gonna try to talk kind of fast so that hopefully we can get through this in less than an hour. First of all, here's my thesis on why you should trust my reviews. One, I've been obsessed with pens since fourth grade. I have tried pretty much every pen, notebook, marker, brush pen, etc. that's commonly known and available on the market just because I'm kind of a pen fiend. And I've also interned at a pen company called Jet Pens where I did a lot of writing samples, which basically meant playing with a lot of pens. If you're looking for a review of one particular item, I'll put some timestamps in the description so you can navigate around. Or if you just want an overview of what some of the best items are and what things I don't necessarily recommend, then be sure to watch through the entire thing. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Before we get started with the rest of today's regularly scheduled content, I wanted to mention that today's video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. GlassesUSA.com is an online eyeglass retailer and they have a huge variety of different frame styles. In fact, they have over 6,000 styles. They have their in-house brands like Muse and Amelia E, along with other more famous brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, and Armani. In fact, these glasses that I've been wearing for the past year and a half are actually available on GlassesUSA.com. Now speaking of their in-house brands, which are exclusively available only on their website, one of them is Muse, and they've partnered with Hilary Duff to make this collection of cute glasses. Not only do they have a wide variety of frame styles, they're also offered at a much lower price point than at traditional eyewear stores. This is because Glasses USA just cuts out the middleman. Instead, it goes directly from the brand to the consumer. This means you're getting up to 70% off of traditional retail prices. In fact, a pair of eyeglasses, including the lenses, starts at just $30. The great thing about Glasses USA being an online service is that you don't have to go outside and violate social distancing guidelines to get a new pair of glasses. Instead, you can just order them online and then have them shipped directly to your house. If you're interested in getting some new eyewear from GlassesUSA.com, I will put a link in the description along with a special coupon discount code. All right, and now back to your regularly scheduled stationary review content. So the first category is going to be brush pens, and the first one I have to mention is the Ecoline watercolor brush pens. Now, as the name would suggest, these are filled with the Ecoline watercolors, and they're a lot more liquidy than a traditional brush pen. They're just so smooth, they just glide across the paper. Honestly, I cannot recommend these enough. The tip is really flexible, so you can get a lot of that variation in thickness that is very aesthetically pleasing in modern calligraphy. The only con is that they bleed through quite a bit, especially through thinner paper since they are so liquidy. So if you want to use them for your notes or something, I would not recommend this. Overall, I would give this a five out of five stars. The next brush pen I have is the Kuretake Zig Brushables. Out of the different brush pens that I'm discussing, this one definitely does have the stiffest feel to it, which is not necessarily a pro or a con. It just depends what you're looking for. It doesn't give as much variation as the Ecoline brush pens do but a firmer tip is better for beginners because it's a lot easier to control. Overall, it's pretty good. They're fairly smooth, but a couple of the colors do that weird squeaking noise thing that I'm not really a fan of. They are double-sided, which is great if you want to have a large variety of colors, but my only problem with this double-sidedness is that the colors on the caps don't really seem to match the actual colors. Like when I use the two ends, it seems like the end with the darker cap has a lighter color than the end with a lighter cap. Not sure how this one adds up, but when I get a color I actually want, and I get one of the good ones that don't do the weird squeaking, dry, noise feeling thing, I'd say maybe a 4 out of 5. Next up, we have the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. I'd say their level of firmness is somewhere between the Eco Line and the Kuretake Brushables. The biggest draw of these brush pens for me is the color range. I think there are 96 colors, and then they added 12 new colors. Can someone do math? I think that's 108, right? How did I pass Calc BC? The world may never know. They are smoother than the brushables in my opinion. They do have a couple of weak colors, like the darker ones and the reds tend to be a lot squeakier and drier feeling than the other colors. 
but overall they're pretty good and I do like that they have a marker chip as well which makes them pretty useful for bullet journaling if you want to write things instead of just brush lettering or coloring. I'd give this brush pen a 4 out of 5. Next, the Zebra Mildliner brush pens. They're a little bit smaller than the Tombow Dual or the Kuretake brushables, at least in the amount of variation you can actually get. And that's because they are very firm and not in a good way like the brushables are where they're easy to control. They just don't really fully want to bend, especially towards the end of it. Overall, the performance is just meh. Maybe I got a bad batch, but they just felt a lot drier than the average brush pen, at least out of what I've tried, because honestly, this video is like 100% selection bias because I only actually buy the good brush pens that I've heard good things about anyways. But out of my brush pens, these are definitely the weakest link. I honestly would not keep them and I would not have bought them if it weren't because they were so hyped up on social media. I'd give them like a 2.5 out of 5, like they're fine, they'll do the job. I will probably keep these just because I've already bought them and they match my mild liner highlighters if I want to color coordinate my notes in that way. But if you have the money to be buying these, I'd rather you spend that money on something better. Next we have the Pentel Sign Brush Pen, which is my favorite little small thin brush pen. I definitely prefer this over the Tombow Fudenosuke just because the texture is a little bit nicer to me. I can't like objectively explain it. I'd say the flexibility is softer than the firm Tombow Fudenosuke, but stiffer than the flexible version of it, which is the perfect happy medium that I prefer. It's also a little bit more liquidy, so it just feels smoother to write with. This is the brush pen that I use for my note headers just because it's very thin so you can fit a lot of words in the space, and it also doesn't have too much bleed through so it works on notebooks. Overall, 5 out of 5. The last brush pen is one that I only have one color of, but I have used all of the other colors while I was interning at JetPens. This one stands apart from all of the other brush pens I own because it has a bristle tip. The tip isn't just a flexible cone made out of felt or plastic like the other ones are, there are actually individual bristle hairs that make up the brush of this pen. So as a result, it's very, very flexible and therefore not really ideal for beginners, but you do get a lot of really good variation and it just feels very pleasant to work with. It's kind of like painting with a real brush, but it's a lot more portable and less messy. If I didn't have any other brush pens, I would probably buy more of these, but since I already have so many, I kind of don't need any more. Overall, I'd say like a 4.5 out of 5. Pretty, pretty darn good. Our next category is pens, and the first one I have up is the Uni Jetstream Alpha Gel Pens. I normally prefer gel pens over ballpoint pens, and it's hard to necessarily explain the chemistry differences behind these two formulas because honestly I don't know enough about that myself. But basically a gel pen feels more like a gel, it's a little more watery, while a ballpoint pen kind of feels like an oilier thing. And the reason I bring that up is the Uni Jetstream is the only ballpoint pen I can really actually tolerate because I very strongly prefer gel pens. The more liquidy texture is just what I prefer, and they also produce a much crisper line that doesn't have so much streakiness within it like ballpoint pens tend to do. However, the Uni Jetstream is that one exception because it is so smooth that it doesn't feel weird and oily like a lot of ballpoint pens do, and it doesn't do those weird streaky things in the middle of the line. Also, I got them in the Alpha Gel pen body, which I actually refill with just a bunch of other gel pen refills that I prefer over the Uni Jetstream ink. Overall, I'd say like a 3.5 out of 5 for the ink. I can like it, but I don't love it. And then for the pen body itself, definitely a strong 5 out of 5 because this is my go-to for note taking. Next we have the Muji gel pen, the retractable one. I'm sorry, I don't know the official name of this pen. Pen industry conspiracy time. I'm pretty sure this is just a private labeled version of the Zebra Sarasa push clip. Like they look exactly the same except for the shape of the clip. The refills have the same font, they're the same size and shape, and everything about them is the same. They feel and perform exactly the same when you're writing with them. If corporate wants you to find the difference between these, there is no difference. I'm pretty sure they're the exact same pen. But anyways, conspiracies aside, this is still a good darn pen. The ink is just buttery smooth, feels really great when you're writing with it, and it produces very crisp lines without any streakiness or railroading or anything. And for a gel pen, it does dry decently quickly, which is really helpful when you're taking notes and you want to highlight over your text. The shape of the body is also something I really like, because I hold my pens really, really close to the tip, 
and this one has a completely smooth body with a rubberized grip that extends downwards very close to the tip. Now, out of the colors of this pen, the lighter colors are definitely weaker, they feel a lot less smooth, and they tend towards streakiness a lot more. But overall, the black one's great, all the dark colors are great. Four out of five, maybe four and a half, let's say 4.25. Next we have the Pentel Energel. Oh boy, if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, I feel like you've heard me just sing praises to this pen for forever. This is my go-to pen ink for note-taking and bullet journaling and just every other purpose under the sun. However, I don't really like the body of this pen. I'd give that like a 2 out of 5 for similar reasons that I like the Zebra Sarasso. It just has these like angular things really close to the tip of the pen and it's not comfortable for me to hold. So instead of using this pen directly out of the packaging, I just buy refills and put those into either a Zebra Sarasa pen body or the Uni Jetstream Alpha Gel body that I discussed earlier. The reason this pen works so well for me is just it feels like a rollerball pen. It feels so light and liquidy and smooth when you glide it across the page but it dries really, really quickly, unlike most rollerball pens, which is ideal for note-taking. It doesn't smudge whenever I write with it, so works for left-handed people, and I can highlight directly over the text I've just written without consciously thinking like I have to wait for it to dry because it just dries so quickly. I can't say enough good things about it. Five out of five. If I could give it six out of five, I would, but I'm gonna follow my own rating scale. Five out of five. Next is the Zebra Sarasa, which I would basically say the same things about it that I said about the Muji gel pens because, as I mentioned, I think they are the same thing. For the Zebra Sarasas, however, I don't have any ink refills of the Zebra Sarasa currently with me because I've used them all up and now I'm working through my Pentel Energel refills, but I do have a sizable collection of their limited edition Zebra Sarasa bodies. Now we move on to gel pens with special effects that I don't actually use for writing or note taking. They're just for adding cool effects into my bullet journal or drawings. The first one is the Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallic Gel Pens. These have a metallic ink, which is the base color, and then they have a second color, which is why they're called dual, and the second color is added through glitter. It looks like stars on a hazy sky. Like that sounds so freaking over poetic for gel pens, but they're just awesome. Just look at the footage. They're so beautiful. They also actually do write quite smoothly, unlike most glitter gel pens I've used. I've only ever had one clog on me, and you can actually write pretty darn quickly with these without having to painstakingly carve out every letter because the ink just won't flow. They give a very unique effect that I haven't seen in any other glitter or metallic pen, but overall I'd say 4.5 out of 5 because they're really nice, but one of them did clog up on me. The next special effects gel pen is the Sakura Glaze pens. They're meant to sit on top of the paper and give a kind of raised effect, kind of like puff paint. They're meant to do that so that they look really opaque and they work for non-porous surfaces like a glossy photo, but they don't really serve that purpose at all. I got them because they're advertised as being good for writing on photos, but one, they're not really as opaque as I'd like them to be, and two, they're just so wet. Like you can just push them around with the pen tip, kind of like pouring water on a table and then just pushing it around. It's just not pleasant. I don't like them. I'd say overall like 1.5 out of 5. Like they write, but they're not good. Next up we have the Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens. I have a couple of these felt tip pens in the small size, which is 0.3 millimeters. They're the only felt tip pens I own because I don't really like felt tip pens, I'm gonna be honest. Felt tip pens are different from gel and rollerball pens in that they don't have like a little ball that rolls and makes the ink flow out in a metal tip. Instead, they just directly have a plastic or felt sponge kind of thing that has the ink directly coming out of it. I don't really like felt tip pens just because one, I write very heavily so I tend to either break or very heavily dull some felt tip pens, and they just don't feel as smooth as the other pens I tend to prefer. However, that added friction does make them pretty useful for inking and outlining because it takes a little bit more effort to pull the pen across the paper, which reduces the amount of errors I make. I'm not really a felt tip pen connoisseur as much as I am with gel pens, so I can't really give a very helpful review of these. They're just good, they're decent. The last pen to discuss is the Copic Multiliner SP, and I have the 0.3mm size. This is a pen that I've used for bullet journaling for a really long time. This has been the sturdiest felt tip pen I've used, 
And it's extra helpful that you can buy a tip refill that you can change out if you've messed up the tip instead of buying an entirely new pen. And you can also buy ink refills. This pen is pretty expensive, but it is an investment because you can get so many refills. So if you are an artist and you want a really nice felt tip inking pen, this is a great option to invest in. But overall, I don't really use it anymore. It was good, not really my taste again, since I've moved away from felt tip pens. So I'd give it like a four out of five. The next category, much smaller than the pen category, is correction tape. I only have one correction tape right now and that is the Tombow Mini Correction Tape. To me, most correction tapes are almost the same. There's just two categories, tape that works and tape that does not work. And this is in the tape that works category, so awesome, yay. It just does the job, it covers things, it doesn't clog up like the really bad kind of correction tape. I don't know how to give this a star rating. Yes out of yes. Now our next category is pencils. I'm including both mechanical pencils and traditional wood case pencils in this category. And the first one I have is the Uni Alpha Gel Mechanical Pencil. This is my go-to mechanical pencil for most of my pencil purposes, like homework and sketching and writing essays and all that fun stuff. Like the Uni Jetstream Alpha Gel, it has the very squishy gel grip, which makes it very comfortable for long periods of writing. You can also shake the pencil to extend the lead, which is useful, but I don't really use that feature. And another feature I find key for mechanical pencils, at least for my personal taste, is that it has a needle tip. So that means the tip is shaped like a really thin cylinder instead of like a cone. Overall, this is basically my ideal perfect mechanical pencil, so I've gotta give it a five out of five. The only other mechanical pencil that I currently own is the Pentel Orenz in the 0.5 millimeter size. The standout feature of this pen is that it has a sliding tip. Basically, it has this cylindrical sheath around the lead, which retracts as you write. It's kind of cool, I guess, like the technology is cool, but it's not very useful for 0.5 millimeter size lead because 0.5 millimeter is fairly sturdy and doesn't snap that often. But if you want to use 0.2 or 0.3 millimeter size lead for an art project or drafting or anything, this pencil could be pretty useful for that. The body is very thin and it's made of hard plastic, so you get a lot more precise control than something that's a little bit softer like the Uni Alpha Gel. But to me, it just doesn't really stand out. It's good, no doubt about it. It's very good quality and these features that I just mentioned make it ideal for certain purposes, but it's just not ideal for my purposes. I'd personally give it like a three and a half out of five. Now we move on to the wood case pencils, which are the ones that are not mechanical. You just sharpen them with a sharpener. And the first one we have is the Dixon Ticonderoga and I have the holographic version. Dixon Ticonderoga is the superior mainstream pencil brand and you cannot convince me otherwise. It's the only one I found that like doesn't have those weird scratchy bits when you're writing. It actually just writes smoothly all the way through. And the eraser on the end actually erases instead of just leaving skid marks all over your paper. This is my go-to HB pencil, which is the standard lead hardness grade that we use for Scantrons and other standardized testing types of things. Five out of five, and it's pretty affordable too. Next we have the Palomino Blackwing pencils. I personally have volume 6.2, which is themed around Ada Lovelace. First of all, can we just appreciate how absolutely beautiful these pencils are? It's a slightly softer lead grade than HB. They don't have an official grading on it, but to me it feels like a 2B, so we'll say it's that. For that reason, I can't really use it on Scantrons, but it is a lot nicer in feeling than the Dixon Ticonderoga just because I prefer something a little bit softer and darker, hence 2B instead of HB. Now this is a limited edition version, so I don't think you can get it anymore unless you like pay like $60 million on eBay or something. But if you want something similar from their permanent collection, the Palomino Blackwing Pearl Edition is very similar. It's just a pearlized white body instead of matte white. I'd give this pencil a five out of five. And lastly, I have this random Stadler Norris Eco pencil that I kind of forgot I have because I got it from a choir festival in Norway and they just gave us a pencil and then I took it with me and I never used it ever again because I don't really like it. It just feels kind of plasticky. It's graded as HB, but it is way too stiff and way too light for me to think of it as HB. It just feels like you're trying to write on a wax paper. So overall, I'd give this like a 1.5 out of 5, like it writes, but I just don't like it. Next 
next up we have erasers. The first eraser I have, and my absolute favorite, is the Sakura Arch Foam. This works super well. It feels like it's actually picking up the graphite from the paper because it's a slightly foamy, I don't want to say it's spongy because it doesn't have like holes in it, but it feels a little more porous. It feels like it's actually picking up all the graphite off the paper instead of just spreading it around like those vinyl feeling erasers. The actual eraser itself is the same as the Sakura foam erasers, which I believe are a little bit cheaper, but I really like the arch version because it has a specially designed sleeve on it. Basically it has this rounded design with non-sharp corner so that the eraser isn't constantly digging into that paper sleeve around it, eventually leading it to decapitate itself. Instead it just stays alive while you're using it. And the sleeve even has these perforations to make it really easy for you to rip the paper off the end as you use it up. I would give this a 5 out of 5. Technically that's the only eraser I have, but I got this t-shirt from Uniqlo with a Tombo Mono eraser on it, which is actually an eraser that I used to have and I used to use a lot. But you know, Sakura Arch Foam has taken over my life now, but we can memorialize my old favorite with this lovely t-shirt. This is Pocket. Next, let's talk about markers. I have one of these Kuretake Zig calligraphy markers, which are not brushed pens. Instead, they have a completely flat tip that's mostly useful for more traditional styles of calligraphy. I'm personally working on trying to do like italic or black letter calligraphy. Emphasis on working on because I haven't gotten very far. It doesn't look too great. I don't really have enough comparison points, honestly, to give an actual review because I don't really have much experience with italic type pens, but they're good. They're shiny, they do the job. Thumbs up. Next up is the Crayola Broadline markers. And honestly, these would probably be my top recommendation for beginners to brush lettering, even though they're not technically brush pens. You can use them for modern calligraphy because they have that cone shape that is somewhat flexible, which allows you to create those varying line widths that are very characteristic of modern calligraphy. I personally would recommend the thicker version over the super tip markers just because they're a lot sturdier. If you're a beginner, you're probably going to mess up a couple of pens while you're learning, so might as well have one that won't break too easily. These come in a huge variety of colors and they're pretty darn cheap. Overall, I'd give these like a 4 out of 5 for my own personal preferences because I do like something a bit more flexible. I also have the Faber-Castell double-sided markers, which are kind of similar to the Crayola Super Tips, except, you know, they're double-sided. They also come in a color scheme that's a bit more muted. The ink is very smooth, it's very nice. It's not really a standout, but it is a good marker option. You can use it in a similar way as the Crayola Broadline markers, they're just a little bit smaller. Overall, I'd say these are like a 4 out of 5. They're a good solid option, just don't really stand out to me to be worth a 5 out of 5. Next we have the Uni Posca markers, and these are paint markers, so they don't dispense the kind of regular watery type ink that's used in the markers that I previously discussed. Instead they use actual paint that sits on top of a surface, so they work really well for non-porous materials like writing on metal or plastic or glass. They are pretty decently opaque and they do the job that I need them for. I just don't really love the actual experience of writing or drawing with them. They feel kind of rough at times, and sometimes there are these weird little stringy bits that come off the tips. I don't know if this is like fibers from my paper or actual pieces of the tip itself, but it's kind of weird and I have to scrape them off every once in a while. This is mostly speaking to those in the medium tip size, and I've also tried one of the fine tip. It's just not as opaque as I would have liked, so I wouldn't really recommend this for a white pen. Overall, I'd say these are like a 3.5 out of 5. Next, the Molito Liquid Chrome paint marker is very similar to the Uni Posca in function. It's a paint marker, but it gives a really cool, unique effect. As the name suggests, it gives a liquid chrome effect. I just absolutely love the effect this gives. It's so stunning. You can almost see yourself in it like a reflection, but it's just a really blurry mirror. It also does feel very pleasant to write with and doesn't do the weird stringy bit thing that the Uni Posca does. This is just a really freaking cool marker and I'd say like a good 5 out of 5. Next we have a couple of slightly less exciting markers, so I'll try to zoom through these. The first one we have is the Statler Pigment Liner. I have this in the 1mm size and overall it's, it's pretty decent. It does the job, it does what it's supposed to, but it does bleed through quite a lot through paper. So I'd say like a 3.5 out of 5 just because the bleed through is kind of insane. This next one is so underrated, and I think more people should be aware of how awesome this marker is, and this is the Deleter Neo Pico 2mm marker. 
It's a lot sturdier than most of the felt tip markers I've used. Usually thicker felt tip markers like this tend to go soft and mushy pretty quickly, but this one doesn't. And the ink doesn't bleed through much at all, unlike the Stadler pigment liner. I'd say like 4.5 out of 5, pretty darn good. We also have these two Sharpies, because they're Sharpies, they're permanent markers. They do exactly what they're supposed to do and are not very exciting, but they're a classic permanent marker for a reason, and I use them a lot for labeling things, so I'd give it like a good 4 out of 5. Now for highlighters, I actually only have one brand of highlighters, and those are the Zebra Mild Liners. Their performance from an objective standpoint is honestly just average. They're just good, alright, good enough, do the job. For me, the standout is just the colors. Oh my god, I love the colors. I am a basic pastel person, and I just like the colors. They're really pretty, and they make my notes look really pretty, which makes me more happy to look at my notes, which is good, because that makes me study more, so. Who's the real winner here? They're not the most wet and they're not the most dry highlighters I've ever used. They're just a solid in between, which is good because they're not so dry that they just don't work, but they're not so liquidy that the bleed through is insane. Out of the pastel highlighter options that are available, they are the best performing in my opinion, but compared to traditional neon highlighters, there are better options. Overall, I'd give this like a four out of five for the performance itself and for the color scheme. Five out of five, definitely. Moving on to our last category, I've been filming for an hour straight, so I think I'm going loopy and I can't talk anymore. Our last category is notebooks. First, I have one of the classic moleskin notebooks that I got from Costco like five years ago. I don't know why moleskin notebooks are so hyped up here in the US because they're not very good. The paper is quite thin and not very smooth. It doesn't even feel like an intentionally toothy sketchbook, it just feels like it wasn't very good quality. It's just rough. It's better than some of the more commonly available cheaper notebooks, like the five star notebooks, but they're not worth the price. Just check out some of the other notebooks that I mentioned on my list for a much better bang for your buck. I'd give this maybe a two out of five. They're just meh. But for the price range, like a one. No, just don't. The next notebook up is the Leuchtturm 1917, and I have one in the A5 size with a dot grid and the soft cover. The paper quality of the Leuk terms is pretty good. They're a pretty standard paper thickness for notebooks in this price range. And you can tell that the paper is a pretty decent quality despite being fairly lightweight because of how little bleed through there is. Now it is a little bit more textured than what I would personally prefer in a notebook, but it is a intentionally toothy sketchbook kind of texture. It has a lot of great bullet journal features as well in this particular notebook. Like it has a pre-printed index and page numbering and some ribbon bookmarks. Overall, it's just not really my taste because I tend to prefer a smoother texture of paper, so I'd give it like a 3.5 out of 5. Next is the Rodeo Web Notebook. I have three of them, actually. I've used two of them for bullet journaling in the Dockard style, and I used a blank one for some of the photos in my book, Study With Me, which is all about bullet journaling. I'll link that in the description and in the cards right now. That side, I think, maybe, hopefully. The paper is just magical. It's so silky. The thickness and quality is comparable to the look term, but it just feels smoother. Now the Rodeo web notebook doesn't have the same bullet journaling features as the look term notebooks, but they do have a bullet journal version I believe. I've never tried it, but you could look into that if you're planning to bullet journal with it. For my overall recommendation, I would say this is like a solid 4.5 out of 5. The last journal looking notebook that I use for bullet journaling is the Dingbats notebook and this is in the A5 plus size. I have two of them that are the bullet journaling editions with those extra bullet journal features like an index and page numbers and the purple one that I'm currently using as my bullet journal doesn't have those extra features. Now as I mentioned, this is what I currently use for my own bullet journal and it's the second year in a row that I've been using these. The paper is slightly thicker than both the Leuchtturm and the Rodeo notebooks, which is pretty important to me because I do a lot of drawing type things, or at least I used to in my bullet journal, which means bleed through is a pretty major concern for me. Texture wise, it's smoother than the Leuchtturm notebooks, but rougher than the Rodeo notebooks. Also, the size is not a traditional A5, it's called A5+, Plus, which basically means it's a little bit wider, and I find this slightly wider dimension just feels a little bit more comfortable for bullet journaling, especially because I like to do things in columns. This is my current favorite bullet journaling notebook, and I guess 
for that reason, I have to give it a five out of five. It just combines all of the features that I like in a notebook or journal, and it's a little bit more affordable than both the Leuchtturm and Rodeo notebooks. Next, I have some of the Field Notes notebooks, which are in a category of their own. They're not really something I would use for bullet journaling or for note taking. Instead, they're just like a little small portable memo book. The paper quality is really great. It's very thick and sturdy, but I don't really use them for calligraphic or artistic type purposes. They're mostly just for jotting down notes very quickly on the go. I also like to use these for jotting down outlines or just throwing ideas together for videos. I don't know what it is about this smaller size, but it just feels more appropriate for brainstorming than something like a bullet journal sized notebook. I don't really have that many reference points for memo sized notebooks, so I can't really give a star review, but it's really good. Thumbs up out of thumbs up. Now my favorite note taking notebook is the Kokuyu Campus Notebooks. So I mostly use the B5 size. I find that size is pretty similar to an average composition notebook here in the US, and it's just a nice size that works for note taking. The paper is fairly thin. It's a lot thinner than almost all of the other notebooks I've discussed so far, except it's thicker than the moleskin notebooks. Because it's thinner, it's lighter in weight, which makes it really convenient for carrying around in your backpack without adding too much extra weight. And even though it's quite thin, it's very resistant to bleed through, surprisingly so considering how lightweight the paper is. It's also very smooth, which I think contributes to how resistant to bleed through it is because the pen ink will tend to just sit on top of the paper instead of fully soaking through it. And it's smooth enough that I feel comfortable using brush pens, like the Pentel Sign brush pens that I mentioned earlier, to letter header titles on my notes. Additionally, one of the features that I really like about this is that Kokuyo Campus notebooks also come with a dotted line rule. This is basically a dot grid with horizontal lines running through it, which is really convenient for note taking when you have to draw diagrams or tables or anything else that would benefit from using grid or dot grid patterns to help you align things and make it all look neat. Overall, this is a five out of five awesome notebook. My favorite notebook for note taking. Although I guess I can't confidently say it's my number one favorite because the second very strong contender is the Kokoyo Soft Ring notebooks. Now these have the same stellar paper quality as the campus notebooks, but they're in a slightly different binding style. Instead of being glue and thread bound like the campus notebooks, these use these soft plastic rings. These offer the benefits of a traditional ring bound notebook in that you can flip the paper over to the back side so that it's smaller when you have to take notes on a small desk rather than having to have both sides of the paper open in front of you like you would with a glue and thread bound notebook. But since the rings are soft and squishy, they're not as tough on the items in your backpack and they won't scratch things up. And you can write directly over them by using the side of your hand to just flatten it down, which makes it really convenient to write towards the middle of a notebook, which normally becomes a hassle with hard reamed notebooks. These are a five out of five notebook for sure. Next up, we have one of the Muji notebooks. It seems like they're not really great about labeling the exact name of the product, but this is one of the Muji notebooks. It's A5 sized with the brown craft cover and it has a dotted grid rule. And I customized the cover myself at Muji Fifth Avenue when I went to New York. Muji is definitely the best paper quality you can get in this price range, and for that reason, I would definitely recommend them. They're not the best paper quality I've ever used. The Kokuyo paper is definitely a lot better, but it's cheaper, so you gotta balance that out as well. It's just a little less smooth, a little more susceptible to bleed through, but overall, still a pretty good option. So I'd give this like a four out of five. Next, we have the notebooks from Shop Denik, which is a pretty small brand, I believe. They collaborate with artists to make really cool cover designs. And I'd say the cover designs are definitely the main selling point. The paper quality is good. The level of bleed through is pretty minimal, and that's mostly because they use a thicker, heavier kind of paper. It's not particularly smooth and it's not particularly lightweight, but it does the job. And I like to use this for journaling. Overall, it's pretty good, not bad, but it's not really a standout as far as quality goes. I'd say these are a three and a half out of five. These are the Lavendaire notebooks, which have been created by one of my favorite YouTubers, Lavendaire. I actually have not ever written in or used these because they're not really a size or rule type that I really like to use. So I'm just saving them for giveaways. Just look at them, they're so beautiful. The paper quality feels pretty similar to those of the Denik notebooks. It's a fairly thick paper, which makes it hopefully resistant to bleed through. Again, I've never actually tried them, so that's my best guess. 
Again, I've never actually written in these, so I can't really authoritatively review this on the aesthetic scale, like they're 400,000 out of 5, and that is literally every single piece of stationery I own. If you'd like to check out any of the products that I recommend, I will link every single one of them in the description. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you'd like to check out some new glasses from GlassesUSA.com, I will have a link and discount in the description below. I also post new videos every Monday, and I post photos of my notes and bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time!